when we use Lightroom or Photoshop and, and we use the masking tools that we have, they're, they're very technical in nature. And what I hope to do in this tutorial is show you that if, if you open up to thinking a little bit more about how these tools tick, and it almost requires a little bit of creativity that you can get a lot more out of them. All right, so let's go ahead, let's jump into a photo here. And I'm specifically referring to, you know, once you've done your global adjustments, we'll go over here to masking. Incidentally, this works exactly the same in Photoshop. Uh, if you open up a photo, you go to camera raw, it would open up camera raw. If it's a raw photo, if you go to the filter menu in Photoshop, you can go to the camera raw filter and the masking tools here. And they work exactly the same. So whatever you learn in Lightroom would work in Photoshop. And the idea that I want to get across is, is let's take let's take a pretty common thing. We're going to break this up over a couple of different photos and a couple of different ideas, but subtract is going to be at the core of them because I think it can be such a powerful tool because these selections will rarely be perfect. So what happens is, is I make a do a select subject of this eagle. And the common question I get is, is well, you can see if I zoom in a little bit it didn't get this area up over the wing there. So how do I refine this? Well, that's where subtract comes in because obviously we need to remove some of the over selection, over masking that it did. So we go to subtract and the brush is the first way that I go to when I want to adjust something. So I'll go to that brush. I think it's important. I always keep flow and density up at hundred, but the feathers is what would make this work. You want your feather up at hundred. And what I do is I use the right and left bracket keys to make my brush bigger. That inner ring is the main effect of the brush. The distance between the inner and outer ring is the feather. And what I'll do is I'll go in there and I'll use that brush to skim the edges. Okay. We're not going to get that perfect. It's not worth getting perfect. Okay. And if perfection is what you're after, I don't think these tools are really suited for you. You might need to actually go into the Photoshop interface, but I don't think everybody needs perfection. What I would say is we go over here and I make my brush nice and big and I go and I just work the outside edge with that feathered circle. I'm not going to go over and paint like that. I'm just going to work the outside edge with the feathered circle and let that do the work of smoothing out that edge. Cause I even saw a little bit of a glow. If I try to make this brighter, and by the way, I would, I would never normally make it that bright. It's always going to look fake if you do, but if I were to try to make it brighter, what I'm looking for are some of these edges and some of that glow and just letting the outer edge of that brush do the work for me of just smoothing out that transition a bit and nobody would ever know that we did it. Okay. I can hover over and I can see what I did there. If I happen to go too far, you're already in subtract mode hold down your option or alt key. Now you go into add mode and you can still hit the right and left bracket keys there. And I can see that, you know, I added or subtracted maybe a bit too much down there. So I go back into add mode, let go of the option, alt key, I'm back in subtract mode, still working on the same mask there. So again, while I would never go this bright, it makes a great example of where the selections aren't going to be perfect, but we want to adjust and feather them a little bit. So let's go down here and let's, let's delete this one. Cause I've got a really, I've got another really good one that I think once we do select subject and you can see this in, in one click, we can make it go away. Also, this is a great time for a very, very quick 30 second word from our sponsor. Um, you saw a couple wildlife photos in this one. If you are into photographing wildlife, I've got a great course on editing that wildlife. It's a topic that I find a lot of people don't talk about, uh, especially, you know, think of it as a landscape, right? We have harsh light. Sometimes we've got dark shadows. We've got bright highlights. Uh, we've got distractions, all those things that make editing wildlife just a little bit different from how we'd edit landscapes. And I've got a really popular course, very affordable, very easy to get through uh, that will help you with some of those wildlife photos that you have. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. Okay, back over to what we were doing here. So what I did is I did select subject to, to get that same selection we did before. And I showed you how you could use the brush to, to modify and, and make it a little bit more realistic. Well, this is where getting really creative here with what we can subtract. And by the way, adding works exactly the same, but I think I tend to use subtract more. So start to think how Lightroom thinks. Well, this isn't perfect. What is it around? Well, I can see two common themes to it. One, it's sky. Two, it's blue. So we've got two different ways that we can refine this. I can go to subtract 
and choose select sky, it's not going to add the sky. We know that select sky would select the sky, but when you're subtracting it, it's, it's taking it away. So I can do that and watch here. Let's zoom in. Let's check out that corner there. Watch what happens. So that blue goes away from those edges there. Okay. I'll press Command or Control Z to undo. And then another thing that I could do with it is go to subtract and I can go to color range because you again, just looking for commonalities amongst what we're looking to subtract or add from. And that's where the creativity comes in. Again, really technical tools, but I think it takes almost a little bit of a creative mind to start seeing this and opening yourself up to seeing this. So I could go to color range and then I could just drag select all the blues that are in that area and that will subtract the blue from in there as well. Which one's better? That's it. Who knows? You're, you're not going to find a definitive answer on one being better than the other. My only goal here is to not just show you some great technique that's got a cool name that'll get me a lot of views on YouTube. My goal here is to get you to think about how these tools work a little bit more so that you can use them a little bit easier. So we're, we're jumping around to a lot of different things. Nothing's going to be perfect to try them all out. So that's another one, another way in which we could use that. Okay, so let's switch to a different photo and, and really look at this in a, in, a, in a different way than I think a lot of people would see. So let's say, let's say I, I just wanted to work on the clothes on the person. We don't have a way to select that, do we, right? We've got our people selection, but there's no way to select the clothes. So what I could do is I could go to select subject and that would select the entire person, okay? From there, I can go to subtract and something that we don't even really realize is there is if we can select people by all of their features and hair and eyes and lips and all that, well, we can subtract those things too. So I can go to subtract, select people. I then go over here and I choose the person and then I choose what do I want to subtract? Well, really everything, right? I want to subtract the face, the body, the eyebrows, all of it, because all I want are the clothes, which actually there is no selection for the clothes. So I wouldn't want to do entire person because that would get rid of the clothes too. So I do everything. I hit create mask. It creates a really complex mask in there. We don't have to even see it. We could just roll that up. And now look at what I can do. Now I've got complete control over the clothes. It did leave those elbows in there, but that's just where I could go in there and hit add and maybe use the brush to go and add those areas back in. So that's another one. Again, just thinking differently about how these tools work and the way that you can add and subtract from there. Don't get fixated on just subtracting with a brush or something like that. Look at all the different options that we have for subtracting from things. And a lot of times I'll often hear people talk about, let's go in here and uh, let's change our mask to white on black here. And let's just go and reset all of our masks. Another thing that I'll, I'll hear people talk about, let's just do select subject is sometimes it doesn't do a great job on hair. And it's again, it's never going to be perfect, but sometimes I'll have a lot of luck with subtracting the background and you can see it refined that hair even more. Okay. So that could be something useful for you in there. Again, just giving you different things to, uh, to go in there and try out. All right, let's switch gears over into a landscape photo and I'll show you another idea that I use. And, and it, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to talk about a concept I think we all need to get to, to know here, which is we can make a selection. I think we have to get away from perfection. For most of what we're doing, we don't need perfection and we can hide our tracks and get acceptable results. And what I mean by that is I did this example once before. Let's say I just wanted to select this foreground. There, there is no easy way to be perfect about selecting this foreground. Okay. So I'm using the object selection tool. So I'm going through here, making a selection and it does good enough. It's not perfect, but it does an okay job. Okay. Gets a lot of the detail in the foreground, not all the detail. It's not perfect. Got some areas I don't want, but it does a pretty good job. And if you wanted to select this foreground and maybe make it a little bit brighter, you're, you're going to start to see all these little edges and things that don't work in there. And you're going to drive yourself crazy if you think there's an easy, exact, perfect way to get it. And I don't think there is, but one of the things we can do is go to subtract. So what we've seen so far are pretty exact methods for removing something, right? We did, we removed select sky, which is going to give us a very hard edge. There's going to be no transition. 
We removed select background. We did something with the people. Again, all really hard edges, no, no transition. But when I have a transition, I do go to that brush, which I showed you earlier, but these linear and radial gradients can be a great idea for, for subtracting, but also making it look real. So I'll go to the linear gradient, and now what I'll do is I'll just drag downward, and I'll let that gradient do the work for me. Okay, this doesn't need to be perfect. All right, nobody's ever gonna see those edges. It doesn't need to be perfect. If it feathers, sometimes a feather will actually give us good enough results. So now I can make that area a little bit brighter, and you can see it just looks more natural than us trying to go in there and make it perfect. And I think when we try to make our, something perfect, I think we, we do ourselves a disservice because perfection rarely exists. And if you're trying to make these tools look perfect, you're gonna spend a lot of time and, and I honestly don't think you're gonna get there. So I think it's a, good, it's a good lesson to come to grips with sometimes good enough is good enough in a lot of our work depending on where it's being seen. Also earlier, I mentioned the object selection tool. It has become one of my favorite selection tools and I actually did a free video right here. So if you're looking to learn a little bit more about how that tool works, this would be a great video to go watch next.